Okay, so this is a short tutorial on building additional things to happen in your 360 videos, image overlays, some things like that, that we're really going to be utilizing the nonlinear video editors to make those final changes. So one of the first things that we all have to deal with um, is how do we creatively do and easily add in some simple things like credits. So this is starting. So we're going to be looking at resolve primarily in terms of our resolution. Um, because that's our free version of software of our nonlinear video editor. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's our starting point, okay? So this simply is a 2K 360 panoramic image coming out of Twin Motion. And what I started with is just bringing this into Photoshop. Um, it could be um, whatever video editor, or not video editor, but image editor that you want to use. And this is sort of the easy spot to start, in my opinion. So the first thing we want to notice is image and image size. We are 2048 by 1024. That is a 2K 360 image. So inside of our image editor, I am going to be adding a new layer. It's just new layer. Let's call this layer text stuff. And then I'm going to go to the text tab. Um, yeah, 36 font is good. And let's just say, this is the sky. Okay, so what I've got right now is a Photoshop file. I, it's got two layers. Um, it is set um, because I brought in this 360 2K image. Um, I know that that is going to position itself in proportion and relationship to that 360 and that location. Okay, and that's why this is my base. That's why I'm not just doing uh, text as something arbitrary. Okay, so that can be really handy when we want to think about it. Now, we do need to understand it is going to wrap this text around. So the more I push that up to the top, the more I know it's going to distort. Now there's some workarounds for that in Premiere, not so much in Resolve. So understand the closer I get this to the horizon, the less it's going to warp that image. And we'll see that a little bit more in real time when we bring these things into Premiere. So this is the sky. I'm going to turn off my background layer. So now um, I'm not seeing that rendering. I am simply seeing my checkerboard so I know that that text is isolated. I can save that as a PNG file. So I'm going to export PNG, um, not JPEG in this case. I, I need that background to be transparent. So let's go export panotext.png. Voila. Okay, so let's go into Resolve and see how this is going to play out. So in Resolve, I already have a few things brought in. So there's my original panoramic. I'm going to drop that into video one and let's stretch that clip out just a little bit, okay? So next, um, I've added two more video layers and I've done that simply by right-clicking and going add track. I'm in the video editing timeline here, by the way. So let's grab this pano text. Let's stretch that across and scroll across and you'll see that has been located exactly where I typed it um, looks exactly like what I want it to in terms of this being flattened out. And again, once I add the metadata for this to be 360, it's going to warp everything. Um, we'll see how that plays out in Premiere. It's a little bit easier. So the next thing that sometimes you need to be able to do is an image. So that's an image of my tractor because I farm things. Um, and if you'll see, by default, Resolve is going to stretch to fit while maintaining proportion. That's sort of the default. So, um, and again, let's do a quick review. This is a 2048 by 1024 timeline format that I'm working on. And again, I'm clicking on the sprocket, setting my resolution to custom so that I can do a 2K 360 rendering, okay? Um, I'm not gonna be able to see it in VR yet, not at least in Resolve 17, the free version of Resolve 17. That comes in the metadata afterwards, and we can get a preview of that. Um, again, working with Premiere. But again, if you're if you're new to this world, um, Resolve is free, and you know free is good. So, let's say I really don't want my tractor there as an image. 
Um, I can come up here to the inspector, so I need to make sure that clip is selected. So that is the inspector for whatever clip is selected. I need to make sure that I have my viewer, my shuttle, whatever we want to call this dude, positioned over so I can see what modifications I am making um, by going to the inspector right here. Um, I've got several options that I can go through, include, including cropping um, and rescaling. The one that I tend to use the most is simply zoom right here. So I can zoom that um, down and it's going to change everything proportionally. I can move its position around um, and do whatever I need to do. And again, as long as I'm close to that horizon line, it's not going to warp the image terribly. The further I get up um, to the top edges, the more it's going to warp that image around. So that image would appear right in that location. Um, so then it's, it's simply a matter of saving this video out, injecting the metadata and seeing what happens. So for the sake of time and, and doing this same set of tasks in Premiere, we'll take a look at that as well. Um, but lo looking at that through Premiere, where I have a button that essentially injects the metadata and projects everything in 360. So let's just go new project. Um, this will be 360 image overlay test. And let's write that to my desktop. So again, with Premiere, the first image that I bring in is going to set up my parameters for the project. So I'm going to go import and let's grab that same rendered image. We'll drag that to the timeline and that sets everything up. Okay. So uh, again, in Premiere, one of my big differences is um, I have my VR display. So that allows me to see everything in 360 in terms of how it's going to work. Let's move the scope over here a little bit so I can get that button back on. There we go. So let's bring in my next item. So import, let's bring in that text layer. Now again, since I'm in Premiere, I can just save that out as Photoshop file and I can tell it which image um, or which layer I want transparent. So you have that option or the PNG option. But let's just slide that PNG over. Um, so again, this overlays one versus the other, the text simply as a background. Um, with Premiere, it's a little bit easier to get to some of these modifications. So my position um, is something I can just drag, scale, it's scaling at about the central point. And again, when I put it into 360, you can see it is no longer flat in its appearance. And this is the same thing's going to happen and resolve once I go through the metadata. Um, and you can see, uh, you know, I can move it around. I can change the scale. The, the, the larger that is, the more it is going to work. But again, if I keep it close to the horizon, it is not going to work very much. All right, so let's do the same thing with that image. Import. Let's actually use, oh yeah, no, there it is. Tractor. Drop that in place. So you can see that is sort of, sort of huge. So let's go ahead and scale that down. Oh, I've got the wrong thing selected. I was scaling my text. And again, just like Photoshop, right? These things are going to stack Highest is in the foreground, middle, mid-ground, um, and with my base image being the background. So let's go ahead and scale that tractor image. Select it, scale that tractor image down, down, down. And again, I can move its position. Let's flatten it out to move the position a little bit easier. Like that. Go back into 360, and now I've got the image essentially floating in place. So there's one other option that Premiere does give us for this type of task. Um, oh, I did want to, let's let's visit this uh, one other issue really quickly. And that is if I put an image close to the top or bottom, I do want to show what happens with that, right? It is going to warp that image much more. Um, again, um, that render out of twin motion 
was already stretched and sized to become a 360 object. These images are not, right? So um, Premiere has a really nice workaround for this. Um, again, the free version of Resolve, at least um, not anywhere that I have found yet, has something like that. But if I go over to Video Effects and I go to Immersive Video, I can work with plane to sphere as an effect to overlay. So I'm going to drag and drop that onto my image. And you can see right away that actually pulls that stretching out. So essentially what's happening with this is it is working that image into the overall 360 format. So if I size that up and let's reposition it over um, it is designed, this is designed to have a little bit less distortion. So if I pan around and see that, it uh, is going to appear inside of my VR headset as a square image floating above everything in 3D space, which is pretty darn cool. Um, again, this is something that I will use sometimes with titles or if I'm bringing up another image or video and want to create sort of a screen in screen effect, um, it's a really, really great way to get, get that effect quickly and easily inside of Premiere. Cheers all.